Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games scheduled for Friday, November 11th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are five games for Friday's College Hoop Slate. First up, we see the Armed Forces Classic between Michigan State and Gonzaga. Gonzaga laying 10 points, and this one total set at 150.5. This is going to be a 6.30 Eastern start time on ESPN, and we're going to be playing this game on the USS Abraham Lincoln. So a real fun game, a lot of anticipation for this one, and uh, nationally televised. You know, Gonzaga scheduled a very difficult non-conference schedule this year. We're not, we're not surprised. You know, they usually do that, but they play Michigan State in this game at a neutral site. Then they go on the road and take on Texas. Then they go back home to take on Kentucky. Kentucky. They play a neutral site against Portland State, but then they go play uh, Baylor at a neutral site. So very tough. And then they play Alabama later on. So a very tough non-conference schedule. But I like Gonzaga in this particular game to win the game by a double digits plus. And I, I'm going to lay the points here with Gonzaga. I just don't think that Michigan State can hang with the Zags in this one. You know, Michigan State's first game, they, they failed to cover the number against Northern Arizona, 73 to 55. They were laying 21 points in that one. And overall, the offense for Michigan State wasn't as strong as I would have hoped to see. You know, they bring back guys. It's like Tyson Walker, the outstanding transfer from uh, Northeastern from a few years ago. You know, he only had six points in that game in 32 minutes of action. He was three of seven from the floor. 0 of 4 from 3. That's a little bit concerning when you're facing a defense like Northern Arizona and now you're going up to play uh, Gonzaga, you know, one of the better defenses in the entire nation last year. And not to mention, this is usually a top 5 offense in terms of adjusted offensive efficiency. They just put up 104 points on North Florida and yes, it was a 41 point win, 104 to 63. You could say, oh, it's North Florida an A-Sun team, who cares? I mean, they were laying 27 points in that one, so they covered the number with by double digits. Uh, they were, you know, they won the game by 41, so Gonzaga looks real strong to start the year. I just think they're too talented, too much for Michigan State, and especially with the tempo that Gonzaga plays at. You know, when you're, you know, if it's a close game early on, Gonzaga, with the snap of its fingers, can go up by ten in a blink of the uh, blink of an eye. They have the number one average possession length. They do not take very long on the offensive side of the ball. They've been like that for the last few seasons. So this is a very quick offense, very strong offense. The defense is also playing well. Give me Gonzaga here, land the points in this neutral site game. Next up, it's the Brew City battle between Stanford and Wisconsin. A 7.30 Eastern start time on Fox Sports 1. This one at a neutral site at American Family Field where the Milwaukee Brewers play. So kind of a semi-home game for Wisconsin. The Badgers are laying 4.5 points here. Totals at 138.5. Now, the big issue that Stanford had last season, and we even saw it in their first game against Pacific, the turnovers on offense. Last year, Stanford was ranked 349th in the nation in turnover percentage, turning the ball over on 22.3% of their possessions you just can't win you can't compete in a, in a power five conference and in games like these against wisconsin if you're going to be turning the ball over left and right now they did make a little bit of improvements in the offseason and i do like their backcourt going into this year and we even saw in pacific you know a little bit of issues early on with the turnover battle but they got sharpened up as the game continued and against wisconsin i do think that stanford this is actually a pretty good matchup for stanford because when you look at the numbers even in their first game wisconsin really didn't do too much in the turnover battle defensively and last season and Wisconsin was ranked 260th in defensive turnover percentage. So they really weren't forcing many turnovers on the defensive end. And that should help Stanford keep control of the ball here and get a lot of shots up. Stanford, we know the big thing for them in the offseason was improving their perimeter. And, you know, we already saw that their uh, three-point percentage against Pacific wasn't too shabby, 36.4%. They made eight of 22 attempts. You know, Stanford will take that all day long. This was a team that was really inconsistent on the perimeter last season. And when you look at Wisconsin from a year ago, outside the top 100 in three-point defense. So this is actually a pretty good matchup, in my opinion, for Stanford. I think they match up really well with, with uh, Wisconsin. I think they're a live dog in this game, and especially at a neutral site, I think Stanford is going to at least cover the number, maybe even have a chance to win it outright. So give me the points here with the Cardinal, plus four and a half. Next up, we see BYU taking on San Diego State. The Aztecs land nine points in this one. Total set at 136 and a half. Now, when you see two teams like this, you know, BYU and San Diego State, two teams have been pretty competitive in college basketball in the last decade or so, and you see San Diego State land nine points in game two of the season, it is a little bit surprising to see, but I just think that goes to show how much San Diego State has an advantage when it comes to just talent level. And when you look at the first game of the year for BYU, really disappointing result against Idaho State. This is an Idaho State team going 
going into the year was ranked 335th in Ken Palm. BYU ranked 44th. This was a big mismatch on paper, yet BYU only beats them 60 to 56. It was a miserable offensive performance from BYU. They were 3 of 16. It's about 18% from three point range in that game. And uh, they struggled to the free throw line, although their defensive showing was strong. But, you know, that's Idaho State. Now you're playing a much tougher team in San Diego State and a team we know is going to be able to play very good defensively. We saw that last year. We've seen it the last few years. But they bring in, they bring back Matt Bradley, a very talented player, great shooter, can shoot basically anywhere on the court, also a great defender. You also bring in a transfer that I really liked in Darian Trammell from Seattle. This is a two way guard, can play very good defensively, a great shooter, also a great playmaker. We saw him score 18 points in his San Diego State debut. He was really the best player on the court for San Diego State. That's a great sign when you bring in a transfer that has to mix with a lot of experienced players on your team, guys that have already played with each other, uh, Mensa, Bradley, uh, Seiko on the bench. This is a very experienced San Diego State team returning a good amount of production. You bring in a talented guard like that, and he plays good right away. Exactly what you want to see for the Aztecs. I think San Diego State wins this game by double digits. This could be a game that gets out of hand early on, in my opinion. I'm going to lay the points here with San Diego State at home. Next up, we see Akron taking on Mississippi State. It's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern start time at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, so a neutral site game. It's going to be Mississippi State laying seven, totals at 130 and a half. Now, I do think Akron has a fighting chance in this game, and you know I, I like what I've seen from them so far. We saw them take down a nice South Dakota State team who just beat Boise State, so a nice win for Akron. Uh, it's looking even better after the South Dakota State second game, but I like the roster that Akron has put together this year, and I do think they're going to be pretty competitive in the MAC. But rather than looking at the spread in this particular matchup, I'm looking at the total. I'm going to take the under between two teams that love to play good defense and love to slow the game down, and that's not an easy thing for Akron to do against a South Dakota State team that runs the court uh, basically every single season. Very, uh, very, very fast-paced South Dakota State offense. But, you know, Akron last year was ranked 352nd in the nation in adjusted tempo, and they were 333rd in a possession length on offense, 329th on defense. So they love to slow the game down, and they were a top uh, 200 defense in terms of adjusted defensive efficiency, which is pretty impressive for a MAC team. On the other side, Mississippi State, they were ranked uh, inside the top 50 in adjusted defensive efficiency. They were also one of the slower teams in the SEC, and we saw that even more so in their first game against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They only gave up 44 points in that game, so the defense really showed up, played a really solid game there. I think points are going to be hard, hard to come by, but I also think this game should be super slow paced to begin with, so you know we don't even need a, a terrible shooting night from both teams to get under this total as long as the game stays at a very methodical pace, which I would expect it would be, because that's where both teams love to play at, that slower pace, both on offense and defense. I'm going to take the under here. I think we see you know a pretty tight game. I do think it's going to be a competitive one. We have to dodge overtime because like we just saw with Akron's first game, they went to overtime. The game went over the total by a mile because uh, the extra five minutes of play. But as long as we dodge overtime here, I think we get under the number. And the final game we're going to go over for Friday's card is going to be between Toledo and UAB. UAB laying four and a half points in this game. Total, one of the higher totals. We just saw a pretty low total with Akron, Mississippi State. Try 156 in this UAB Toledo game. So basically, a completely different, completely opposite style of basketball between these two teams. Now, for me, this is not a play against Toledo. I think Toledo is very impressive going into the year. They're top 100 in Ken Palm, which you don't see a lot of MAC teams getting that at the beginning of the season. A very experienced roster and a team that should be the favorites to win the MAC conference. But UAB, man, this is a really good UAB team. They're experienced as ever. They bring back Jelly Walker, who was outstanding in the NCAA tournament, in the conference tournament, really all year last year. And he had an outstanding performance in his first game of the regular season. 38 points. He was 6 of 10 from 2, 5 of 9 from 3, 11 of 11 from the free throw line. 38 points for Jelly Walker in 28 minutes of work. He usually gets 30 plus, so... Just an unbelievable game for him. And this is an experienced team. They bring in some big-time transfers. Eric Gaines, one of them from LSU. So you bring in an SEC product and a pretty good SEC product in Eric Gaines. Uh, you still have Trey Jameson back from last year's team. He was an outstanding center, seven foot. Very tough to beat him down low, and he's very tough to stop when he's got the ball inside the paint. I just think UAB, especially with how fast that they play offensively, how good of a shooting team this is. They play, uh, you know, just a, they were ranked thirty. They're ranked thirty first so far in adjusted offensive efficiency. They were ranked twenty seventh last year. Uh, I just don't know if Toledo can hang with them. And similar to Gonzaga, with UAB playing at such a fast pace, you know, even if this game is close early on, you're only laying four and a half points. 
points. UAB can go up by five plus in a heartbeat. This is how good this team can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Uh, Jelly Walker especially. So I like UAB, which should be a very fun game to watch. Very high scoring. Should be close early on, but when you're laying those four and a half points, I think UAB gets there by the end of the game. So give me UAB, land the four and a half points. I lean towards the over as well to end the night. And that's it. Those are five games for Friday's college basketball schedule. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your basketball plays in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.